Hi, so in this video I'm going to show some of the Moodle basics, how to load up a course and then how to add resources and some of the basic icons you're going to have to deal with. Uh, so once your course is created, you receive an email that your course now has a site. Uh, if you click on that email, you go to your site, uh, log in. In this case, I'm going to log in as a designer, which has the same privileges as an instructor. The only difference is we're not in the front page listed as an instructor, but apart from that, we have the same privileges. First thing is you'll notice your course is grayed out. If a course is grayed out, that means students can't access that course. Uh, you can switch that on settings. You go to edit settings, uh, you go all the way down, and you have availability. And here you want to change it to this course is available to students. Um, and then after you change it, click Save Changes, and that will be it. The students will be able then to access your course. This will change to a bluish color, from gray to blue. Um, apart from that, you'll notice that Moodle has, by default, this course has topics. You can change that name to anything, and then you have blocks. It's a block system. You have blocks, and you can move them up or down. Uh, so one of the first questions I got asked is uh, how you edit. Well, you edit by turning editing on. And you can do that either in settings, turn on editing, or you can do it on the corner, the right corner at the top, turn on turn editing on. So if you click on that, you'll see now a bunch of icons show up. This many used to be separate before, one for activities, one for resources, but now they're joined. And the wheels, that's for editing. And then you'll have, besides every single item that you add, you'll have a way to change the title, a way to move it right, a way to drag and drop it. So now you can drag and drop. You couldn't you do this before in Moodle, but now you can drag and drop. A way to edit the resource, a way to duplicate it, a way to delete it, a way to just hide it. So you can see this one's hidden and this one's not hidden. So again, when it's hidden, it's grayish. When it's not hidden, it's blue. And um, that's pretty much how these little icons work. Then there's also a way to show it to only a group of people. So let's say you only want a group of people to access a particular form. You can do that as well. Um, that's a little bit more complicated, so I'm not going to go there right now. I'm just going to go to the next part, which is how you add an activity or resource. But before that, again, remember there's an I to hide or see. So if I wanted to hide a whole week, I could hide a whole week. I don't have to hide little items. But again, this item, like the manual, is hidden right now. Um, this is for a page or a link. This is for a link and this is a form. Uh, those little icons tell you what they are. Uh, so uh, let's switch this to... You know, if I wanted to switch the topic name, I could just do it here. I could add topic, let's say topic A instead of topic 1. I'll save that. I could put any name, but now I just changed it from 1 to A. Um, and you can add there in that page any other, that's a label. Uh, you can add, I could add it there pretty much anything. An image, I could add a whole text file here if I wanted to, a table. I could add it an HTML code if I wanted to, so the labels are pretty flexible really. Um, apart from that, then you want to add activities or resources. Moodle is increasingly becoming more user friendly. So the new thing in Moodle, oops, that went back. Um, let's go back quickly. Okay, uh, the new thing in Moodle is that now you have kind of the, the explanation for it or a brief summary of what they do right beside it. We didn't used to have that before. And attendance model, which uh, that's really nice that they have a dialogue model. Uh, they're increasingly adding new modules to it, which makes Moodle even more flexible. Um, one of the most common things, though, however, is you want to share a reading, a PDF, a file. Click File Resource for that. Add it. And then anything that's in red, you have to add it. So Resource 1. And this is optional. You don't have to fill it out. You could even show this on the front page, but the description is optional in this case. Not always, but in this case it is. Then you add the file. Click Upload File, choose the file, find a file from your desktop. In this case, let's, uh, let's not do an audio file, let's just try to do a text file. I'm just going to upload a book quickly. Uh, and there it says, you know, the percentage on the bottom is 67, 78, 99, that's it. Uh, if I wanted to add, add a file that has, uh, like, let's say it's a whole HTML with subfiles and, and, and it brings in other images, etc. I could add them here and then I would just select which file I want it to be the domain file, uh, the file that opens up the rest of the file. So you can put a whole series of files within upload a file if they work together as a single file. So that's pretty much how you add a resource. 
again if you notice when I was I quickly went over some of the things so you can pick you know what how to display in a new window or, or for a pop up uh, use a pop up download etc um, if you want to have some restrictions most of the time I don't use the advanced settings uh, you can use them but you don't have to question marks help you answer kind of what you're doing or what that uh, particular item that you're adding activity or resource is um, so it has a lot of self explanations or a lot of FAQs or uh, help uh, embedded within the system but um, in general the additional features read them once get familiar with them most of the time you won't be using them you'll just use the standard packet in a sense um, so here when uh, if we all these are great uh, you know you can use all these tools some of the ones that are used the most however are the assignment that's having a student send you a file and then you can instead of them sending you all the files to an email they can send them directly through you to Moodle they can automatically add it to the gradebook and then you can grade one by one and then click grade put a comment save go to next you can even upload a file with comments graded track changes etc so that you don't have to uh, send that to each individual email but rather so within a centralized system that's one of the things that a learning management system does it centralizes learning so that gets people not to get lost as much as they would if it was just an exchange of emails and all the resources everywhere throughout the internet it kind of centralizes things a little bit so that's one of the benefits of a learning management system um, if we move forward a little bit you have and the forum is used quite a bit too uh, some of these are new and I'm I'm excited about the attendance because I always wanted it to be added um, there's a lot of additional plugins we control which plugins we don't um, higher up in the well OIT does they decide what plugins uh, get added to to Moodle here at the University of Minnesota um, but uh, the forum one allows you to create different types of forums there are four different well they used to be four I think now there are six types of forums I'll, I'll add that as well in this case I think the description is it's required you have to put a description yeah see so it's red uh, and then the standard forum everybody can add a new forum then there's a simple discussion which is just a single thread then there's a question and answer and then one where each person has to post one forum if you want a more detailed description uh, click here the question mark and it'll tell you uh, but then let's say forum for week one and then please post your opinion of and you know you just you have a discussion that's the good thing about it you could have mandatory subscriptions and it has a discussion that's threaded the threading helps you to not get lost but you know who's commenting to who and uh, it's it works pretty well and um, it's one of the best ways to have an asynchronous conversation within a course uh, so let's go save and display again see I didn't really use many of these things uh, other features you can use them but in general you won't be using them um, so then the new student will go and hit reply, another student will then reply to that student, etc, etc, etc. So that's kind of how the forum works. So that's adding a resource, that's adding a forum. Um, some of this, I hope you try it. Uh, the quizzes are great because you create a database of questions and then you can use them in other quizzes, etc. Uh, turn it in allows you to check for plagiarism. It's kind of similar to the assignment upload, but the difference is you can check for plagiarism, which is great. Uh, so the quizzes, again, there are many types of questions there. Uh, you can have multiple choice, free response. You can even have a time essay, which is really nice because you can give somebody 30 minutes, they have to finish their essay, send it in. Um, so it has a timing feature. You can determine when a quiz is open, when it's closed, how many attempts, what's shown to the student right after the attempt. Um, the quizzes are great. Um, so database can be great too. You can have them upload various files. And the one file, for example, I used to use it for upload a file, then modify the file, upload the modified file, and then people could see the original file and the modified file. So uh, it's it's pretty useful. Um, some of these are a little bit harder to use. The workshop allows for peer grading. It's great. You can develop a rubric. They can grade each other. They can. Uh, one of the professors at the school of social work uses it for students to grade each other's videos. I think it's great, but it's kind of complex to use. So that's I, I wouldn't consider it like something that uh, ask for help if you're doing a workshop because it's a little bit harder. Um, folders uh, they're similar to files, just more than one file. Labels that. The labels basically allow you to add anything you want to add in the front page, like an embedded video, a short description. Um, here has some of the options that you can do, some of the benefits of it. A page is, just, is you basically create an HTML page. You add whatever you want to it. Um, you can add 
a topic you can basically describe you can copy a Wikipedia page for example and dump it in a page because it's just that it's just an HTML page inside of Moodle so you're not sending somebody away from Moodle but they're staying within Moodle and then finally you have here resource and you have a URL which is I mean it can be a YouTube video it can be anything it just has to be um, an IP address, like just uh, an address somewhere in the internet, uh, a URL uh, that you're linking to any www, um, any any website somewhere that you want to link to. Uh, so that's great. That can be a journal article, that can be a video, that can be uh, just a website that has relevant information, a Wikipedia page, you name it. Uh, URL can be anything. So I'll add a URL to finish this video, and um, I hope that was helpful. Again, Moodle can be pretty complex. Uh, let's put Wikipedia and let's put water. Let's copy that. Where are we? Let's see. Um, here. Okay, so I'll copy the external URL. Wikipedia water. Again, look at this a little bit the first time. You want a new window, you want a pop-up, you want in the frame. Uh, Usually I put new window, but that's just a personal preference. Save and display. So now it tells me a link. I click on it. I go to the resource. Uh, let's go back. So that's kind of uh, the most robust, basic, um, very quick overview of what Moodle offers a, fac a faculty member or instructor. Um, the nice thing when you add an activity itself is that they automatically get it to the gradebook. So now if I go to the gradebook, I have... Um, let's see. Well, I haven't added an activity yet. I saw that I added one, but no, no, maybe I didn't. Let's add one then. Let's add an activity to to finish. Um, the forms can be graded, but usually they aren't. So let's add an activity uh, assignment. Let's do this a file upload. Upload a file. Upload a picture of your family, let's say, or your dog. Okay. You can set the cutoff date, the dates, where you want to late submissions, etc. Um, by marking, if you want them to submit what size files, uh, if you want to allow for comments, uh, what's the grade, all that. So we'll save and display. Um, so we go back here, and now it's right there. So if I turn editing off, let's do that for a second. If a student was going to see now, this is how a student would see it. You can always see what students are seeing, especially if you switch role to and you switch role to a different role, a student role. Um, in this case, click upload a file, and um, well, it's actually let's switch roles so I can show you student add submission. See, so now now this is what a student would see, and they would add their file, and um, it would get added to. To their profile, eventually grade it and add it to the gradebook. Um, so now let's go to the grades. And I have here upload a file. Um, so here would be the grades for that assignment. And assignments keep getting added, then you can add categories, you can weight each category. Uh, so you can do pretty much anything you want with the gradebook, weighting, extra credit, etc. Um, finally, courses. Uh, if you create a course, we'll usually copy it if you want to for the next year. Um, you can download a course actually from the platform as well. Um, I don't know if you can in our platform, but you can. Yeah, so backup. If you do a backup, you'll create a file that then you can upload to another Moodle platform as well. Uh, restore, you can upload a whole Moodle. That's, so a course can be a unit separate from um, the rest of Moodle if you want to, and it's compatible to other Moodle installations, which is something that's pretty interesting. And then also the question bank. Again, if you create questions for topic A, topic 2, topic 3, topic 4, then you can have those questions be randomized in order. You can have an exam to pull like five questions out of a data bank of 20 questions, and that data bank is only topic A, and then there's another data bank for topic 2, etc. And you can mix and match them however you want to, and then you can have a final exam that pulls, pulls questions from um, all the different categories that you have created throughout the course. So that's a 15-minute overview. I kind of went longer than I wanted to, but I think I covered most of the basic Moodle features. Thanks.